Welcome, everybody. Uh, I will try to give you a, a brief uh, overview of uh, a rapid growing sector uh, and developing uh, and uh, to give you some what we think might be the uh, key things to watch and, and also how it might play out. Uh, this is a sector that is extremely positive influenced by the policy we've seen over recent years, ambitions to reach the net zero targets, uh, and that this has led to a, a quite significant um, uh, amount of companies uh, flowing into the sector and also um, a massive amount of investment opportunities. <clears throat> so, uh, and reflected by nearly four, uh, more than four trillion US dollars invested in the sector and predominantly within the renewable energy and also electrified transport. Uh, and, and this is naturally given that it is the two key sector that if you want to achieve the net zero, uh, which is the target, this is a sector you need to address. And here batteries are clear uh, the key technology to battling CO2 emission. If you start on the road transport, it's been developing uh, quite positively over the last few years. Uh, the adoption rate has been uh, moving in the right direction at least, uh, and Europe leading the, the pack with, with the increasing regulation and, and restriction on uh, emission looming. So, so that's of course uh, brought optimism into the space. However, looking at the world average, it is clear that, that level we are at now is lagging the net zero. So we need to do more and it needs to happen fast. <clears throat> Batteries will, uh, transportation will be a key driver for battery demand. And, and, and this is also the sector that is perhaps most important now. And, but it's the growth we see here is still, it is expected to reach about 10 million cars, electric cars in 22. So a nearly a doubling for 21, which also showed a tremendous growth rate here. And, and this is driven by that. You, you see that the, 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 the traditional uh, auto manufacturing are, have been encouraged by what you see the pure play EV are doing, uh, the growth rate they are achieving, but also motivated by or discouraged by the, the other passenger, passenger vehicles and demand growth or the demand dropping out of a clip. And with the more restriction looming in Europe in particular, uh, I think you need to transform. And this is, has been the, the key change over the last year, last couple of years. EVs have gone from to being a core offering and more reflected in the company's um, capex budget and, and amounting no, now to more than 600 billion US dollar, an increase of some 100% if you compare it to 2018. However, the trans transformation for the automakers is not without risk. They are now moving in from a well-known territory into a value chain where they have limited control, limited uh, overview, and it's mostly dem dominated by Asian players. So understandable, they are striving to create a European local uh, value chain and been supporting by the EU. Similarly, you see in North America, trying to get a domestic value chain, putting in place uh, incentives to make that happen. And it all turns down to one thing, which is key element, is that for the automakers to have, continue to have control, control over the battery cost, which has been an important driver for the transformation seen in the, in the EV, for the 40 EVs. Uh, and, and it actually has brought us fairly close to getting into price parity with, with uh, fossil fuel vehicles expected to happen in 24, 25. And, and with, once that happens, the sector will not longer be required to have subsidies or massive incentives. It will stand on its own feet. So you are getting closer to this inflection point, you have to say. Uh, the second point that has been discussed and has been a, a risk factor in this transformation is the growing infrastructure that is needed to get it um, to get a wider adoption in place. And as this picture, which is fair to say, is crowded, indicates that there are a lot of uh, lot of um, uh, companies in place who will, who will 
who will make the investments needed all from Horeca segment to oil majors uh, are willing to spend a lot of cap- uh, capital in this space and, and a lot of capital is needed. More than a trillion is said to be to reach, reach the net zero level. However, it is important to, to, to acknowledge where we are in the cycle and we are quite early. We are in the spare beginning and, and while people might disagree or agree on, on the level uh, we will reach eventually in this, if it's 2030 or 2040. I think most agree on the direction that's upward and it will continue growing for decades. Uh, one thing that hasn't been spoken so much about is a s- energy storage in this segment there. And, and it's, it's somewhat forgotten despite actually growing faster than the, and then the transportation segment. And it's an important segment with a battery as an energy storage solution could be used for multiple um, uh, uh, different uh, applications. And, and, and also em- emphasized by the volatility you see in, in, the, in the power market over the last year. Uh, and this is, of course, driven by, partly explained by moving into more renewables, uh, and that will increase the, the volatility going forward. And hence, energy storage will be needed. Uh, this is, however, not if not particularly recognized by the by estimates so far. Uh, some claims to be insignificant, uh, but while others, as Rista is, is actually putting emphasizing this as a major sector that could grow and pull demand for battery for longer. We are also in that uh, camp. We think it will be a major sector and, and pulling demand. And finally, here on the chemistry, I think just to remind everybody that the battery of chemistry has developed in, uh, in the right direction, increasing energy density, also expanding the application areas and, and the roadmap going forward uh, for sure indicate that we will at least in the medium term will have uh, significantly higher uh, and density, while the long term potential might even uh, even um, make uh, aviation a, a possibility this might be five to 10 to 15 years down the road, but that's the way the direction goes. And to take it on to the maritime segment, you see how the battery has been become a key enabler for all alternative fuels. That is something that could happen eventually within the aviation industry. Demand is now closing into uh, between 2.7 to 4.5 terawatt by 2030. So, uh, and it's growing beyond that one. However, it's important to notice that demand forecasts have been revised upward constantly since the beginning of the this sector, and and that is also our our, uh, one of what we think will happen happen going forward. Demand will be continue to be revised revised upwards. And of course, with this optimism on the demand, what happened now in 21 was, of course, a flush of new uh, announcements came out in terms of capacity. However, 1.7 terawatt, adding up that total announcement of being, being around 4.5, that's similar to the net zero estimate in, in 2030. And, and this, of course, again, has, has led to discussion if the market is heading into a way where we are going to be significant oversupplied or not. We believe not. First of all, demand growing faster and we think it will happen quickly. Secondly, uh, keep in mind that 4.5 terawatt, that's nameplate capacity, uh, and, the, and the market is not factoring in any scale-up issues here, uh, which is tend to be quite normal across all industries and, and batteries, which is quite challenging will also appear, Helen will also uh, experience that one going forward. Uh, if what we, had, what we have done is, is take the announced capacity 4.5 terawatt and then we have adjusted for ramp up, utilization, scrap and energy density and so on. And as you see on this chart here, the supply growth is not excess, ex- extensive, it's more following the, the EV projection or, or EV growth, what you saw there. So, and if we sup- compare this one to the net zero and demand growth, you can see clearly that 
we are not heading into a massive oversupply. We are, on the contrary, we need more supply, and that needs to be announced fairly sh shortly if we are not going into a battery crisis beyond 2030. And to put it in context, 11 terawatt, this is of course 2040, is a long time, a long, down, long way down the road, but it's 350 gigafactories. It's a massive investment needs to be done if we want to succeed with the net zero um, scenario. So are we just looking at the blue sky scenario? No, unfortunately not. And, and the access to the critical raw materials is one of the key issues we have identified. Um, it should grow, demand should grow for critical raw materials, should grow with, um, with battery production. Uh, and um, the problem here is, of course, that supply is not catching up. Uh, and as you see now in 21 and starting on 22, prices have been rising quite substantially. Uh, and of course, it will result in that expectation for battery costs is for first time expected to increase. That's the first time in the, uh, over the last 15 years. So this is mainly due to the raw material situation. So what is the solution and how is, uh, how is it navigate here? I think one thing is to, to broaden out the, the chemistry specter here, here shown by LFP cells. You could use that chemistry and then avoid some of the uh, raw material um, crush and, and uh, perhaps also uh, use uh, different between what you use in the premium segment, also into storage. So that could be one solution. Recycling another one. However, recycling is, will take time before recycling uh, make an effort, uh, impact here. So it will take a long time. In the meantime, in Europe at least, we are stuck on being based with um, the dom uh, the um, dependent on an uh, Asia value chain. Uh, and this is largely driven by fossil-based energy. So, so it's, it's not perhaps the, the right way to go. I think we need to invest and need to secure our, our own supply of um, raw material, critical raw material. Uh, and, and that's a hope will happen uh, fairly uh, rather sooner than later. Uh, so that's our main concern on this segment. Uh, however, we are quite optimistic on the sector, and um, and uh, I think it's right. And, and, uh, and if, you, if you look at the, the battery index we have con uh, composed here, it consists of more than 130 companies uh, across the value chain, and it's outperformed the world equity index quite substantially over the last few years. And to quote, the, to take the quote from CEO of BlackRock. Decarbonization is going to create the greatest investment opportunity of our lifetime. And we have to agree. And bear in mind that battery will be the key enabler to be able to decarbonize a significant portion of the industries. With that, the future is electric, we think.